Hi, my name is Andreas Mogensen, and I'm an astronaut with the European Space Agency from Denmark. I'm talking to you from the International Space Station, about 400 kilometers above the surface of the Earth. I would like to talk to you a little bit about my mission. It started on August 26th from Kennedy Space Center in Florida, where I launched on a SpaceX Falcon 9 and Dragon spaceship. I was a pilot of Dragon, which I'm incredibly honored to be. It's the first time that a non-American has been a pilot on a U.S. vehicle. And as a former aerospace engineer, it was very interesting to learn about all the details of the Dragon spaceship and to see how the Dragon compares with the Russian Soyuz spacecraft, which I flew in 2015 on my first mission to the International Space Station. My mission on board the International Space Station is also very different from my first mission in 2015, which was a short 10-day mission. This time, I'm scheduled to be on the space station for at least six months and maybe as long as eight months. For such a long mission, it's important to feel at home on board the International Space Station and to establish a daily routine. This time, I have my own personal sleeping quarters, which is really just a small closet that I can step into and then close the door. And inside, there's enough room for my sleeping bag, a laptop computer, and a few other personal effects, just enough to make me feel at home. In 2015, I actually slept right here uh, on the roof of the Columbus Laboratory. I had to camp out for the 10 days that I was on board. This time, I get a little bit more privacy uh, in order to really feel at home up here. There's also a lot of technologies necessary to keep us alive. Uh, perhaps one of the most important systems is our environmental control and life support system, which provides everything that we need to stay alive, including our drinking water. Drinking water is a very precious resource on board the space station, and so we try to conserve water and we try to recycle and reuse as much as we can. In fact, at the moment, we're currently reusing about 95% of all of our water, which means that all of our urine is collected together with the sweat and the humidity from the air, and then it's cleaned, repurposed, recycled, and turned back into drinking water. And so we tend to say that the water we drank yesterday, well, it's the same water we're gonna drink tomorrow. But there's a lot of technology involved uh, a lot of energy is consumed, a lot of chemicals needed to clean the drinking water. And so we're constantly testing and developing new technology. And I'll be testing some new uh, water cleaning technology from a Danish company called Aquaporin during my mission. This technology uses a protein membrane uh, and the principle of osmosis to only allow water molecules to be transported through the membrane. And so it's a way to clean drinking water or to clean wastewater and turn it into drinking water without using energy and without using chemicals. A very interesting technology for the future, both in space, but also on the earth. In order to allow our urine to be recycled, our toilet functions a little bit differently up here. We separate urine from feces, and then we recycle the urine. The feces, we just throw out. We also can't flush our toilet with water, uh, and so instead we have to rely on air pressure or air suction. So the first thing you do when you go to the toilet is you turn on an air pump, and that helps to suck everything away. And so it's a little bit like urinating into a vacuum cleaner. There are also going to be plenty of opportunities for students to participate in my mission. I have a uh, hardware called Astrobit with me, which will allow students on the ground to program activities, send that code up into space and have it be performed on Astrobit up here on the International Space Station. And I'm very excited to see what ideas students can come up with and to see the results of their tests run up here in space. I hope you're being inspired. Um, sending astronauts into space is an incredibly big team effort. It takes hundreds if not thousands of people to allow me to work and live on board the International Space Station. 
engineers, technicians, programmers, all sorts of people are involved in not just designing and building the space station uh, and all of its hardware, but also to maintain it and to operate and control it on a daily basis. This is a huge team effort and it's only thanks to the hard work and dedication of everyone on the ground that I'm able to live and work up here conducting research and technology development. So goodbye from the International Space Station. I wish you all the best.